आफ्टर क्लाइंबिंग एवरेस्ट आई I was a little lost. Let me just stop you. You say so casually after climbing Everest, as if it's something that all of us are doing. My plan was to just study MS in US, the straightforward way for a lower middle class person in India to aim for a better life. Maybe I should climb Everest now, which can be a substitute for my MBA, as it would teach me more life lessons while climbing Everest and while fundraising those. Sixty, seventy thousand dollars. I would learn more than what most B schools would teach me. Wow. So that's how I went about my search for MBA. So you had to raise money to climb Everest. You know, people think that it's all, it only takes a physical rigor or a mental, you know, strength to think about it and then just to go about it. But it's a very expensive expedition also. I started a campaign called Sangash Mission Mount Everest, and being an IT engineer, I created my own fundraising website where people could donate by any means. And I was still shy. I did not share that website for six months. I did not tell anyone uh, because obviously it uh, it is like way outside your comfort zone, uh, letting go of your ego and asking for people for help. Hi everyone welcome to the journey within with me Shobha Rana today's episode is extremely special kyunki hota hai na life mein aapko kabhi aise log milte hain who are so humble and who are so inspirational but you just can't make that out when you meet them once but when you hear about their stories these are such incredible stories and there are people who are really committed to bring out the change in the world they really want to make a dent in the planet today's story is of one such person i am very very proud to have with me today uh, somebody who has done 20 expeditions over 20000 feet he has already climbed mount everest which is like the uh, ultimate aspiration for a lot of climbers he has uh, done that while going through covid himself so and you know he's just not a climber he sees it um uh, mountaineering as an opportunity to bring out a larger message to a larger crowd and he's really making a lot of shifts in the mindsets of people around him and he's causing a real change and impact in the lives of the people who just are probably not leading the lives that you and I are leading so please welcome with me on today's podcast Harshvardhan Joshi thank you for having me excited to chat with you Thank you Harsh for first of all agreeing to come here to do this with me. Aapko dekh ke Harsh pata nahi chalta hai that you know you uh, look as a guy who is very simplistic and you know you have no air about you. You come you sit you'll have a very easy on conversation. No one can tell the kind of things that you're doing. Over the last half an hour of conversation that we had before this before the camera was on my god I was completely blown over to know about your journey the things that you stand for. It's just incredible. take us through your inspirational journey how it all started and what do you do first of all so i am an it engineer yes just another engineer so it engineer by education endurance athlete by passion and sustainability advocate by compassion past 5 6 years uh, after graduating i have been in the outdoor industry full time uh, as a consultant for organizations bringing professionalism in the industry in the adventure tourism industry while also playing a lot of roles for learning for going towards my goal of climbing everest so i also worked as a mountain guide sometimes and right now i am preparing for climbing other metaphorical everest after everest so yeah that's my journey what is the metaphorical everest that you are planning to scale up next so After climbing Everest I I was a little lost because uh, obviously there are many more mountains which are on a climb Harsh, First of all let me just stop you you say it so casually after climbing Everest as if it's something that all of us are doing First of all let me give you the credit for that and uh, just take us through that journey as well you know make us live that <laughs> at least vicariously through you if not for real Okay so I'll I'll go back around 10 years 10 years behind Uh, at the age of 14 i started working i used to repair computers door to door i used to assemble and sell computers 
and that's when i met a group of doctors who took me for my first hike uh back then i was not into sports or outdoors or anything but few years later during my second year of engineering i got exposed to travel again i had just turned 18 i had some savings and until then my plan was to just study ms in us the straight forward way for a lower middle class person in india to aim for a better life and once i did a solo trip to other places in india i thought i would want to go somewhere in the himalayas just for my thirst of exploration and travel i used to travel for learning because travel is the best teacher and when i went for my first hike i realized that this is a much richer learning experience and real beauty begins where roads end so this is this was a way richer kind of travel adventure travel and i decided that i would climb everest some day but probably 20 years later because the average age of everest climbers is between 40 and for indians it is around 50 because that's when you are you have the resources uh, you have the experience and uh, you you look for more meaningful things in life and then in 2017 when i graduated i was going to go for an mba to some b school in india like one of the top 30 and just when i was about to take an education loan of that 15 18 lakh the people in those positions which i aspired to be my friends i am graduates and all told me that harsh you seem to be much happier in the himalayas and you are very enterprising so why don't you do that and i spoke to a few friends some of them who were already directors in uh, fortune 500 companies and i i asked them does it get easier because they were climbing everest or doing iron man and stuff at that age and they were like i should never get easier so if you want to do it you might as well do it now and i just thought that okay maybe i should climb everest now which can be a substitute for my mba as it would teach me more life lessons while climbing everest and while fundraising those 60 70000 $70, i would learn more than what most b schools would teach me wow. so that's how i went about my self taught mba wow that's that's incredible so you had to raise money to climb everest you know people think that it's all, it only takes a physical rigor or a mental you know strength to think about it and then just to go about it but it's a very expensive expedition also and coming from a lower middle class humble background and the all kinds of jobs that you used to do i'm sure you've not made enough and like you said that you went on your uh, own little mba uh, which could be better than any other mbas out there because you were raising funds for climbing everest so how did you raise fund what all happened i did everything i mean i i i i started a campaign called sangash mission mount everest and even back then a lot of my audience was international since i made a lot of friends in the himalayas and i was active online so uh i told them the story the campaign story that sangash is a sanskrit word which means conquest or struggle and this is the story of harsh's sangash to reach from a small town at 0 feet above the sea level near mumbai to the highest point on earth 29029 feet uh while creating awareness about something i care about so that's how i created that campaign and being an it engineer i created my own fundraising website where people could donate by any means and i was still shy i did not share that website for 6 months i did not tell anyone uh because obviously it, uh, it is like we outside your comfort zone uh, letting go of your ego and asking for people for help and of course in parallel i was trying for sponsorships but it is very difficult because most of us don't know how to communicate and we don't understand what brands want and one very big issue is for them is the trust that will we be able to deliver and it's a risky sport so yeah i i did a lot of things and there's not any one single thing which worked for me like i did raise 23 24 lakh via crowdfunding and i think that was the biggest learning of my life because i raised it just to 120 130 people and most of them have never met me even till date even people from mumbai uh they are so busy but it was a very humbling experience that they believed in my journey even without knowing me and came forward to support me similarly with sponsorships 
uh, there was a time when I was telling people that hey you want to propose your girlfriend uh, okay I'll take the flag for a lakh up to the average <laughs> and then you there were times yeah because I needed that money yeah. and then there were times that when I had to let go of brands that they were offering me 2-3 lakh but I was like sorry I cannot take because you are on borrowed time out there you have very less time so and I'm sure I don't regret today that okay I had that opportunity although I did not like I still have some debts and I spent more from my pocket but I was like if I had even one more flag I don't know if I could have clicked that picture or it would have put my life in danger or anything because every second counts and every gram counts even though I got the lightest flags made like very 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 light but still every gram counts when you are taking thousands of steps out there while gasping for breath so it it was a fun experience and great learning how experience. many flags in total did you carry and so, how many boyfriends did give out these flags <laughs> no, to, no, to no. carry for i did not take any of those in fact i didn't even take uh, of my own family or pets or anything but i i did take the indian national flag i took flags of two non profits i took f- flag of my title sponsor and i took flag of two very small businesses so one of whom i didn't even charge and the other gave me some products but just because i wanted to support them and they were the first ones to come on board so when i approached them they were so nice uh, one is this watch brand koros Uh, oh, so nice. it's it's uh, an american company just 5 6 years old company and they were like harsh uh, sorry we don't have enough funds uh, so you go pitch someone else for sponsorship but take whatever you want from us and we don't want anything in return so i i just i wanted to give back much more and that is how i was able to raise funds that people saw that i am giving them a value worth at least a crore if they are investing 10 lakh in me so you should always be a giver and then people would be able to help you better you know harsh all of this learning comes when uh, you take that initiative to make it a mission to do uh, something so passionately and passion is just not enough you have to bring in a lot of compassion and i think that is where uh, uh, when you said you designed your own mba uh, i think passion there could be others teaching you out there but compassion is something that you have to that humbling experience what it teaches you that is something that takes you um, to the you know uh, levels that you are at and and the kind of things that you are doing today so um, you started out um, as a mountaineer somebody who is um, uh, in love with the outdoors who is in love with the mountains and you've done over 20 expedition over 20000 feet i mean which is just incredible on its own so now what is ahead for you what is the next thing that you're looking for your metaphorical everest you were talking about so i obviously on a climb a few more mountains maybe everest also a couple more times uh, while supporting some causes but now i would want to do something greater uh, and be on the other side of things where i can help people uh, help others up because that is what you realize on reaching the top of a mountain that you are in the best position to help others up and when i was fundraising there were so many people who donated me 1000 2000 3000 dollars uh even when they knew nothing about the outdoors but still they they believed in my mission like you said and the other thing was that when i was climbing everest so i was going to climb in 2020 and uh, 15 days before the start of my expedition there was a pandemic declared and i was like no no that must be from the chinese side i'm going from <laughs> nepal, <laughs> nepal and i i went on for my training then there was a 7 day lockdown then that got extended to 21 days and obviously it took a while so uh, that was a difficult year but it was the best year of my life because i learned much more that year if i would have gone i was going to take a 50% loan for it mortgaging my parents house and that is something which people appreciated i told them that hey i am anyways going to go there uh, so they saw that okay he is determined so there is nothing your like your parents were okay to mortgage the house for your uh, <laughs> dream <laughs> it didn't come to that but i think yeah they, they because were okay. because yeah i have been independent since i was 14 15 so 
I would have gone to that level only when they knew that I can make that money later. Parents I can also obviously... saw that इसको दस लाख देंगे तो एक करोड़ वापस ले आएगा। हाँ दस नहीं था पचास था। लेकिन लेकिन या I I would have worked as an engineer then at least for five ten years. Anyways that was the original plan that I would become a brand manager for Decathlon or something, <laughs> save for many years and then go and climb. So it was a balance between the opportunity cost or main तो मतलब कि वो determination करना है तो करना है वो mindset तो रहना चाहिए so it didn't come to that so I don't know the answer and they didn't have the funds so they were like तुझे जो करना है कर पैसे मत मार या fair enough लोग बोलते हैं कि parents permission कैसे देते तो it started that way and uh, the thing is that then in 2020 two three months lockdown so first one two weeks i was very motivated i i did a few thousand skips in the morning i once climbed every, the elevation gain of everest within the staircase which got covered by media and everything uh, and then i couldn't go out i didn't have a treadmill uh, i wanted to get an indoor bike uh, because my iron man race was lined up just six months after मेरा क्या प्लान था कि एवरेज से आऊँगा उसके बाद ऐसे ही मजाक मजाक में आयन मैन तो हो जाएगा उतना एंडोरेंस एंड बोथ आर वेरी सिमिलर स्पोर्ट्स लाइक ऑल दो बोथ आर डिफरेंट वन इज़ अ वन डे इवेंट वेयर एट द एंड ऑफ द रेस देर आर पीपल विल टावर वेटिंग फॉर यू एंड यू कैन गो एंड टेक अ शावर एंड वैन यू क्लाइम एवरेस्ट इवन आफ्टर दैट फॉर फिफ्टीन डेज यू आर फाइटिंग फॉर योर लाइफ एंड नो गुड फूड ऑब्वियसली नो शावर एंड नथिंग Uh, but both are endurance sports, long duration, low intensity, and high volume, big volume. So the training was uh, like complementary, and I thought I would do an Ironman after returning from Everest. Now that Everest is cancelled, I'll diligently prepare for Ironman, and I'll aim for a better timing. Uh, and then that also I couldn't do. I couldn't train, and being a good citizen, I did not step out for seventy days outside my home. But obviously. I think many could relate that we all faced mental health issues during the pandemic, and then mid June onwards, I slowly, slowly started stepping out. In fact, those two months, I was thinking a lot that oh my God, I don't want to buy a treadmill. कि क्या पता खाने के बाद हो जाए तो and then people told me that I don't think so. I was like no, and I knew that my parents would at least feed me, but I was like no, I cannot invest. Then I collected some of my savings and I bought a treadmill. and that logistics company <laughs> got closed down so my treadmill was <laughs> lost for one and a half month then finally in mid june i got it and then i got my indoor bike so who ne bola ki cycling bahut acha hai so there was a boom like there was a i think few hundred times increase in the cycle sales and the indoor smart trainers which we use for our ironman training were out of stock so i had to get it from taiwan with a premium which took a few months and Finally, I was slowly, slowly back to training, uh, and then there was no swimming pool open. So one of the doctors from my hometown uh, told me that her shoes my pool, and I was like, "No, sir, your life is much more important right now during COVID." But he was like, "No, no, your training is more important. Nobody else would use our pool. You only you." So I, I, and I had never done long distance swimming. I, I was swimming since twenty years, but I, I'm, I'm still a pathetic swimmer. and i trained there and a month before the race the race got called off <laughs> <laughs> and then i i one day while training i just called my coach uh, when he woke up in california and told him that hey i live in this place where we have a lot of outdoors we have a sea a good highway we have some 4 km big dam so uh, i would want to do it by myself uh, i i have the logistics sorted i have the sensors so uh i organized the race myself for uh, yourself yeah with few volunteers fortunately i'm blessed with friends and i have had the sensors the gps and everything and uh, uh on 10th october on world mental health day i did the same distance in the same timing with some friends tracking it and some friends following me uh to create awareness about world mental health that i was the heaviest in my life during lockdown i went up to 56 kg and Uh, still i was able to do it in a few months and then i switched back to everest training and then came so you did your you designed so you designed your own mba then you designed your own ironman 
and now you're climbing your metaphorical Everest. I mean, how do you think of all these things? Do they just come to you? And also, when you talk about such crazy things, you know, and then people come who believe in you, they support you, then do you feel the pressure of executing it for them? Or where do you draw the line, you know? So there's always that pressure, which they don't put on me, but I, no, I put on myself. That yeah. They believed in my dream because it's, it's not a regular dream. It's, it's, it is obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in a lot of ways, you know. So. I think that's why they come to me. They 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 admire it. Or many people live their dreams through me. Uh, some people see some other energy or spark, but I don't think it is anything special or uh, different or anything. I think we all have our metaphorical Everest which we want to climb. For some people, it's getting that first job. For some people, for a lot of people, it's their business, their startup. Uh, for many people from very humble backgrounds it's getting that degree or anything so it is about climbing their own mountain so coming back to the question that pressure is always there that people are looking up to me or counting on me or they have invested so much for me they have gone out of the way for me but at the same time it is also very motivating and inspiring for example when I was crowdfunding there are people, there are disabled people who donated to the campaign. Uh, I knew them personally and I was like, no, because he also came from a humble background and I know that he wouldn't spend even that thousand, two thousand for himself. But he was like, no, I want to participate. Uh, and the pride he took in participating and for me, it meant a lot because that 500 or thousand for someone like him is much more mm -hmm. than what two lakh is for someone so, so I okay. give everyone the same respect and they mm -hmm. also loved it similarly I had a friend uh, like I met him via social media he met with a bike accident he didn't have 8 lakh to fix his body for the surgery and he donated some money and I was like come on I cannot take it in fact I would want to give you if you ever start a fundraising campaign but they all saw something uh, in the campaign in me and I never had to really I never asked for funds so one thing I could never <laughs> go outside mm -hmm. my comfort zone so what I did was I just created a good website mm -hmm. self-explanatory one mm -hmm. and I just shared it with mm -hmm. people I would say that hey check out that campaign and mm -hmm. let me know what you think and mm -hmm. people uh, would do what they want to do a lot of unexpected stuff ha happened like whoever you think this person might donate that person would never donate and then there were people, uh, People, uh, my friends would tell me don't approach that person, he's never gonna <laughs> donate, he doesn't even spend any money on himself. And that person comes out and donates 1 lakh, a 26, 27 year old guy who doesn't have a lot of family money goes to a job, does good at a job. So my friends also felt so empire, uh, inspired that he didn't do 10 years college, he didn't do 10 rupees in the rickshaw, and he didn't donate, kiya, matlab, what? And I don't know those people directly. So it was, it was like so, so surprising every day. New challenges, obviously the stress. And at the same time, the training would keep me going. Like I would wake up at 4 a.m. I would go for my workout for that day. Like there was a scientific structured plan uh, leading up to Everest. Uh, then I would work six, seven hours writing emails, maybe study, read a little. And then I would go for a swim. Swimming pool में भी मैं beach में एक एक बार मैं mail check कर रहा था swimming से मैं वापस घर आते आते मैं bicycle पे या scooty पे एक हाथ में banana खाते खाते और बीच बीच में mail भी check कर रहा था और respond करता था because I sent a thousand emails so and ten of them got back to me so one of yeah and one of them got on a call so one is to thousand is the ratio you are fighting against and that's why it works so it's not like it was easy or anything so the pressure in fact the pressure only uh, brought out the best in me but today it is even more difficult like after Everest when people look up to you and you want to do something bigger or you want to maintain that benchmark or uh, keep up with your own achievements is difficult not that my achievement was very high but maybe I am lazy so whatever I did even keeping up with that is not easy and that's why I am now taking up more challenging goals one of which is going to one of the not one of the like uh, top top business program on earth uh, because I want to inspire people that the guy who never ran even 100 meters till 18 took up 
outdoor adventure and other endurance sports and went and climbed Everest became an iron man and similarly the same guy who never went even to the top 5000 colleges in india didn't have the exposure goes to one of the top 5 business schools on earth to one of the most sought after or difficult program so that's my metaphorical everest now i don't know if i would be able to achieve it and to be honest i am finding it much more difficult than climbing everest i tell people that i can climb everest 10 times but now until it's done it seems difficult but that is what is keeping me going mm mm-hmm. so um you uh, you know you said you are uh, uh, some word that you used in between but uh, you know uh, harsh in my opinion you are such a humble and such a great uh, person and you are so inspiring uh, uh, your journey is so incredible i mean i i, I just feel there's so much to talk here and um, uh i would want to bring in another aspect to climbing you know here so these days because social media has become so wild everybody is on social media and every page is selling a dream you know and mountaineering and you know climbing mountains vacationing traveling and um, uh, making travel your career is a dream that is rampantly sold now so when you are at a position where you are uh, uh, actually achieving things you are in a position where you are really causing that inspiration but do you think at certain levels it could also get misleading in the ways that you know because you said you're fighting against a ratio of 1 is to 1000 how many of us have it in us to stand for that 1000 to get that one thing? and there are thousands of people sending those thousand emails but yeah there are enough opportunities so i won't uh, tell people not to fight or dream big but about social media I don't use social media and I won't shy away from saying it although I have a good audience good number of audience and it can <laughs> fairly hurt my considerable income but yeah I prefer my mental health over it I already like maybe I am encashing just 10% of what I could do through my social media but I would want to rather sleep well and live a much more peaceful life some people are great at balancing that and compartmentalizing their time but for me the cons of social media are much more so i have automated my entire social media i never consume content uh, even when i consume from my mom's phone it is very selective uh, and even to my followers i tell them that hey feel free to in fact go off social media so my dream was to delete all my social media accounts after climbing everest in 2020 for real and then in that one year i invested so much more and it grew so much more that it was difficult to let go of it because i know that until you got it people are yearning for whatever a wikipedia page or that blue tick or uh, 100000 followers or 10000 or 5000 or whatever and after achieving it all i i only say that i think jim carrey he said it um I wish everyone was rich and famous only so that they knew it is not what it takes to be happy. So for me I'm losing out on a lot of money and opportunities but life is much better off social media. How do you maintain to be such a simple humble grounded person when people your age are buying the next best phone or the you know upcoming car the whatever's of the world what keeps you so simple uh, tell me about an experience uh, Uh, probably one of the most humbling experience where you saw something or it impacted you or it touched you in that way so i also do buy a lot of fancy stuff although i don't own a car but wherever it is required when it comes to my training or when it is a life and that situation for me our equipment is also pretty expensive otherwise i live a very simple and minimalistic lifestyle uh, so about humbling experiences i have had many because i I solo backpacked across 20 states of India multiple times and I had uh, a lot of uh, lot of experiences in the Himalayas while climbing while hitchhiking but talking about others one experience I had while while I was on my <coughs> one of my first trips with Project Jira uh project chirag is a non profit which works on rural development through sustainability by electrifying villages so i went to this village within 3 hours from mumbai so usually when you think of mumbai the financial capital and so much water rains and everything people have to hike 4 hours every day to fill two pots of water 
because although there is a water body a pond or a stream or something in this region of jawahar and mokhada out there uh, but it's a hilly region so even one and a half kilometer away it's a one and a half two hour hike and during my second visit i saw that girls have to quit school so that they have to go and fill water drinking water and then i saw uh, first when i got so my my climb was completely powered by solar and i am a lot into renewable energy so f- first i felt a little embarrassed that i am talking about electrifying villages and all i am distributing are these two three solar powered lights but when i would see the happiness on that kids village especially in the himalayas uh, because they lose 12 hours of their lives every day since they don't have any electricity they don't have light the nearest road had might be a few days away they obviously don't have any communications let alone healthcare or education so for them it is it is a huge change uh, i i don't know how to draw parallel but let's say moving from a 10 lakh rupee house to a 1 crore rupee house for us it's it's something like that for them because i saw the first hand effects in the himalayas Uh, the effects of climate change but now i realize that it doesn't help us not it helps us not only on the environmental front but also on the socio economic front for example we not only give them lights in those villages in this one uh, near mumbai and there are hundreds of such villages uh, we also with the help of some very talented solar engineers were able to set up a solar powered water lifting system which brought water till the village and installed a sustainable no maintenance water filter so they got drinking water and not just that they got water for irrigation so now girls can go to school plus their families get livelihood they can cultivate two crops a year because now they have water so they don't migrate to other cities the culture is saved and then they have crops or we also distribute fruit saplings so it brings them income and increases the green cover and you see all this is done in so less money compared to the things which we spend on or care about and they are so happy in that little even when they don't have it like i go through go to this village and i see that a woman has a chulha burning inside her hut during the day a very small source of light like we asked her ye dhuwe mein kyun reh rahe ho they don't have windows and then that chulha is their source of light and we are able to solve it just by not eating two burgers or going to starbucks once so it, that is something which is which is very enlightening for me but about humbling experience i think it is just the value system that stay grounded remember always remember where you come from so that is something which came to me and i know that there's always someone who is going to be better than you smarter than you better looking than you richer than you so no it's use it's not of, about that i think yeah. it's about the intention that you start with and it takes that one right intention to have probably better looking smart whatever people to collaborate with you also because collaboration is is the way forward and uh, collaborating with these ngos you just talked about the story of one village uh, you worked with about 650 yeah so project chirag has done 650 villages when i joined them they were around 400 villages and yeah they are doing it almost every week so not just them there are there are so many such non profits so i think everyone should a one climb a mountain in their life even a small one would do because that would teach them a lot fundraise once in their life and volunteer for a non profit once in their life i think that is one big lesson that you've uh, you know given us i think we really need uh, some reflection as people who live in fancy houses and lead a life where you know spending on those burgers and whatever coffee is uh, you just spend it not even thinking twice about it when it comes to really causing that impact you think oh it's going to take something very big out of me but the real story is not that even a small contribution with the right in- intention makes that um, and the contribution doesn't have to be financial you can go and volunteer you can contribute in many other ways like so many people mentored me 
and i am grateful i am wherever i am today because of so many people showed me the true north and i followed it so it doesn't have to be financial we can do much more by investing our time and just being a kind person absolutely compassion kindness i think that is uh, the way forward for all of us uh, uh, for all of us for everything so harsh um, another question uh, that's coming to my mind is that you said that you know you just don't want to remain an adventure a guy a guy mm-hmm. who climbs and who scales up these mountains you also want to become an entrepreneur and you want to become that for a reason and there's a certain route that you're following for it so what is it take us through that so i have always been an entrepreneur and i i'm already running my startup but the thing is that my industry is very niche and there's so much potential in me to do much more at this age and that's why i am taking up this mba in the us so that i can bring professionalism from there to my outdoor industry because there are a lot of people who don't have accessibility to it due to lack of awareness and adventure tourism and outdoors have so much to offer that uh, i think if i take people outdoors everyone once or integrated into any curriculum it would solve a lot of issues because anyone who goes outdoors will never litter again will become a climate change and sustainable development advocate because he would experience the beauty out there and he would start uh, valuing nature third is that when they have to walk 100 meters to fill a bottle of water and sleep in those meadows and live with the minimum because no matter how much money you have you can only take what you can carry and still they would be very happy they would have the best time of their of their life they would realize that oh my god and this is why so many corporate leaders come out there for our experiences in fact most of them even climbing everest are investment bankers or techies and similarly in iron man races because these things teach a lot about what's important in life and our self introspection journey so i am on a mission to make outdoors accessible and safer because a lot of deaths especially in india happen for very evitable reasons and that is why we need to increase safety awareness and create a rescue ecosystem and not even rescue ecosystem make adventures much more accessible and safer like they have done in europe especially in switzerland or even nepal like nepal is one good country to look up to because there you have the slightest headache there's a chopper coming for you in 10 minutes cashless because insurance is mandatory for everyone there's satellite internet everywhere sat phone for good reasons so those are the kind of things which i want to bring in india and obviously uh, the ecosystem of west and that's why i'm taking up this p school where i would explore all these internships and work with those companies and move on to the business side of things from being a brand ambassador right now i'm the brand ambassador for these outdoor brands but uh, in the long run i think an athlete's life is boring especially in india if you see any even any olympian i'm still a very small guy but uh, yeah fame and all is temporary sport ecosystem is also not so huge in india so that's why i, I would want to be on the business side of thing where i can create much more impact yeah so you want to be inside the system to really cause that impact and to create that shift uh, which is such a great thought to lead with uh, harsh and uh, uh, anything else that's coming to your mind uh, a, a moment uh, where uh, you know i in fact uh, i would want to talk to you about one of the most scariest experience which caused a lot of anxiety to you you talked about mental health issues uh, during the pandemic and i'm sure uh, the kind of journeys that you're on on you know weekend basis and every month on month basis for years now i'm sure you would have had your moments where everything would have looked just the heavens coming down on you you know uh, tell us uh, about one of those stories and how do you keep your mental sanity and emotional sanity intact so there were a couple of times at everest when that happened uh i can think of three incidents first was obviously uh the popular one when i got covid 40 days into the expedition on eat of me we received a weather uh, weather report that there is a cyclone approaching from uh, arabian sea 
Cyclone Yas. No, that was Cyclone Fanny, uh, which will arrive on May 14th and would leave and after that the season would end. So we were going to start that night to reach the summit before the cyclone arrives and return to safety. It takes around four days to reach from base camp to the summit and another two days to get back. And as the leader of our international expedition team, I decided to get everyone tested for COVID once again. Although we were out there since over a month and everyone was tested already. And usually you would be like, how would COVID reach here? Reach here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm at the Everest base camp, like yeah. 18,000, 19,000 uh, feet. Feet, yeah. 17,500 feet. And just few hundred people from all around the globe. But they are here since over over 40 days and everyone's tested a couple of times. Every all, Many of them are vaccinated. And then <laughs> 15 minutes later when I'm sipping on my ginger lemon honey tea, looking at the glacier, my route for that night, I checked my testing kit which was lying on a boulder and I saw a line on it <laughs> and I tested positive for COVID. When I went into the kitchen tent, uh, into the dining tent where my team was sitting, I told them, hey, and they already knew nobody, <laughs> told nobody, <you. laughs> yeah, nobody told me because they didn't know how to break it to me because they but knew that so close. Yeah. yeah and they, they knew that how much it meant to me. Obviously, everyone had made a lot of sacrifices and it mean, meant a lot to everyone. But yeah, just they couldn't break it to me. And then I was like, okay, I... I, it's obvious that I won't go up because life over everything. <laughs> I was like, it's okay. Lifetime ka savings gaya, ghar gaya, kuch bhi gaya, jaan hai to jaan hai. So I had that clarity and I'm happy about that. So I just isolated myself in a tent and I started consulting a few different doctors using the sketchy satellite network. And everyone said different things. People said, hey, start Fabi flu. Don't kill yourself up there. You are taking the next chopper down. Uh, <laughs> and chopper if weather permit and I was like okay okay cool down and then I was like no I'm not gonna go out to Kathmandu because anyways there's no other option uh, and Kathmandu is like if you go by walk 10 days and then a flight away or a chopper ride away I was like I'm gonna stay here in isolation and at least like I, uh, it's a long shot but I'm gonna give it a try let's see if I recover and how are the symptoms and everything so those next 11 days staying alone in isolation uh, contemplating thinking every day that oh my god abhi or ek saal. i did not think about money it it was at the back of my head but i just kept telling people oh my god saal gaya. oh my i just wanted to get done with this so that i can go and climb other mountains i had planned that and i wanted to go to a developed nation to study something based on this i wanted to finish my book but i was like it's people told me like people texted me few of my few good friends who became my advisors that Hush, it's okay some people asked me to give up and then it was my choice my decision making so those 11 days were were difficult that way but still even most carrier was once while returning from the summit just below the summit uh, at what around 29,000 feet I slipped and fell on a dead body which was hanging off the cliff towards an 8,000 feet drop oh my god and uh, while going up I ignored all of them because there can be any XYZ reason why they are up there uh, it doesn't have to be you uh, all you have to make sure that you don't make the same mistake and obviously you feel sorry for them but you don't look at them while going up because it can play with your brain and <laughs> now I myself it's like fell literally on in it. A, you're in a battlefield you know yeah. you see the soldiers those have fallen down uh, yeah and then I end up falling on him like the thing which I was trying to avoid completely if you think of it it pulls you closer because our human mind cannot differentiate between not or anything uh, so that happened and as I got up I just told myself that if I die up here my mom's gonna kill me and I, <laughs> I just came down because people don't realize that going up and all is okay but that's this, just 10% of the job 90% of the fatalities and accidents happen while coming down and I knew it 
and i am scared of heights so as soon as i reach the top i will like let's go down uh, at everest i did spend like 15 20 minutes because you take so long for everything uh but but i don't know yeah it was it was scary it was very scary at that moment and the entire time because you are in the dead zone you don't know how when anything can go wrong and similarly when you right. are going to camp one from base camp i'm just sharing all three lessons so you can pick at uh, experiences you can pick any one for your episode so once while crossing the khumbu ice fall while returning from everest so after i returned from the summit i was at camp 2 and i got stuck there for a week my team was not with me because they had attempted 10 days earlier when i was down with covid that time they couldn't make it because the weather predictions were wrong and the cyclone arrived early uh and <coughs> so at camp 2 uh yeah one week continuous cyclones and everything and then while coming from camp 2 a week later there was an avalanche just beside me in the khumbu ice fall so that was like a bomb blast and uh, until then i had my gps tracker on on 30 minute interval that they can see my location but khumbu ice fall is similar to a huge horror chamber at an amusement park only this one is for real so a crevasse like a 100 feet pothole can open beneath you uh a ice pinnacle can fall over you anything can happen and because it is continuously moving uh, as the sun rises so one something fell just besides us and there was an avalanche we just heard it we didn't see it or wo continuously hota rehta so you all you have to do is just, just keep moving focus karo laser focus ke yeah, saath chalte raho keep moving as fast as possible lekin aisa hua ki wo blast hai teen char second baad my my sherpa guy forte he he dugged me and we both we both like Uh, duck uh, covering ourselves with snow and then we got up and the path is gone because it <laughs> the glacier shifted and it was just two of us and nobody else on the trail to jo wow. fixed ropes bhi thi wo bhi wipe out ho gayi kuch dikha uh, ha aur barf pura aa gaya so you don't know where is the crevasse where is the where, where is the way and then we were lost for one and a half hours main pehle 10 minutes kiya fir 5 minutes fir 2 minutes because there are so many people who have died out there and that's the most dangerous part of everest way below just above the base camp but out there if i die people won't even find my body so that was one uh, scary part that way but yeah once you are out of it it's all fun you totally forget it you move on from it you're laughing and telling this story as <laughs> if it's so easy yeah all you have to do is remember those lessons going forward in life to be better it is very hard to remember anything when you are in that situation you know and that is the reason for a lot of mental health and in, in fact even emotional health issues that uh, you know you know things in in the knowledge domain information domain of your brain but when it comes to application especially when you have an avalanche metaphorical avalanche coming in your life or when situation goes down and heaven falls on you then applying that knowledge and information just doesn't come to you you know you just get completely uh, shifted and drifted from your path and uh, it's kudos to you that you stayed on so out there it is easier because your life is at stake so you are very mindful very focused that is something which people enjoy in the mountains that you don't have distractions you don't have network and you you only focus on your next step because one right. slip and you can go thousands of feet how should know here is where i sort of disagree because living in the cities and living the mundane lives we don't realize that our lives are also at stake with these decisions that we are making the choices that we are making or not making uh, the issues that we are taking for granted those are continuously pulling you down you know it might not be life and death for you today but if you keep going on that path it could be that for you completely that is why so many mental disorders are now creeping in and are the, they're completely fatal you know in a lot of ways not just for you for everybody around you so that is the thing that is a problem that people and even i uh, in the cities we make everything a life and death situation so my life coach and people keep reminding me hush this is not everest don't make this a life and death situation even when i was preparing for my mba or for my gmat or anything i was depressed so so people remind me that hush uh, don't make everything a life and death situation and so far in life i have always followed this five year rule that whenever faced with a disaster ask yourself 
will this matter five years from now so tomorrow if i'm losing a lot of money or something goes wrong at work or anything or even with health uh i would be like no it won't ma- matter five years from now so then there are very few things which would bother you so usually mental health is obviously a issue because of the lack of awareness if people just think that is it such a big issue and people be just more be mindful, mindful about things then it gets a little easier of course mindfulness is something that makes uh, i think and that's the uh, panacea for uh, as a solution for 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 everything you know uh, and i really hope that people do take it up more seriously and uh, apply it in their lives not uh, as a concept uh, when you hear it and when the situation is all hunky dory around you but especially when it's all down and out then applying that knowledge Now, uh, so Harsh, this channel of mind, the journey within the podcast, is also a lot about uh, trying to understand the inner evolution and the inner journey and the inner world. And I, I really feel that we all lead a very different life in the external, outer world. Harsh Vardhan could be a climber, adventure guy, entrepreneur, um, um, whoever you are, who, and whatever you represent. But internally, the kind of issues that you feel. Uh, the way you feel fear the reason could be different for you it could be an avalanche for me it could be not getting work for next 3 months whatever do you know but the way we experience fear the way we experience love the way we experience anxiety the way we experience any emotion on the planet is same and the way it shakes us down and depression being the common word for all of us we all face it you know in 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 the similar way so my um, idea through this podcast is also to bring out stories like yours um which highlight that how similar we are on the inner level and if we really start connecting with that inner self of ours then we all can contribute to each other also in so many ways and we can make this world a lot more compassionate a lot more kind because i really feel that compassion and kindness is also a a solution for a lot of emotional health issues and a lot of emotional intelligence depends on how kind and how compassionate you are are you bull headed about something that you have started out for sometimes you just have to take that call to make a complete u turn from there whether you like it or not right so to have that emotional intelligence and to have that uh, kindness and compassion for yourselves and for others around you um, uh, that that really matters a lot so uh, what do you think what is the role of kindness and compassion in the journey of a person's emotional well being and uh, of course mental well being hmm of course all these are important but it somehow came naturally to me because of the passions i pursued like and i pursued them for a reason like i said travel for learning before that i started cycling borrowing people cycles because i read somewhere that take care of your health like you are a diabetic or a cardiac patient so that you never end up being one similarly now i tell everyone that take up one sport any sport passionately which takes care of your health and many of my friends or mentees take up mountaineering so then there they naturally learn all of these that to climb a mountain although base camp to everest summit is just a five day thing but you take one and a half months because you cannot directly reach there so you have to go a little ahead acclimatize come back rest recover <coughs> and it's the same thing in life so you learn that plus everyone's life is dependent on each other so you learn to be collaborative similarly you you realize that everyone is vulnerable out here like i i had my personal with me out there i had the qadari princess i had the royal guard and army of bahrain i i had a lot of fancy influential people you take a lot of european groups and the groups yeah. from the us on the yes uh, and i i had a tribal girl from chatisgarh as well who was who became the first uh, female from her state to climb oh yes there was a big news about it yeah so yeah. there there are all kinds of people and everyone is vulnerable so you learn all of this out there to be humble and to be kind to each other and you learn that all of us are same like you said that up there you carry that only one bag whatever wealth you have whatever status fame anything that you have in the world the external world you leave that all behind and your world literally becomes one of that whole group right so um, that is such a great message and when you look at life from a holistic purview you know it all falls into these very simple basic fundamentals which uh, which are not uh, you know something that you have to read really not a rocket science and no yeah. people don't need to go and climb everest for this it's all within you so 
some people many people find it through meditation different kinds of meditation i have been practicing mindfulness meditation since past 6 months because although i am very focused and disciplined even i struggle with uh, a lot of things in the urban environments when i don't get my dose of those stuff urban environments <laughs> i like the way you put it <laughs> yeah. you have called yourself like you have become a person who is just i am a best. farmer <laughs> now i am a wanna be farmer wanna be and farmer and hopefully i'll be a real farmer uh, in the coming years once i have tried everything else uh, and then i'll obviously go back to being a farmer in the you himalayas know, it's 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 so uh, funny that if you think about it few years ago our parents left their farmlands and came here to pursue whatever they are doing now and now we as kids we are sort of willing to go back and do where they started from it really life really comes a full circle you know yes and because grass is greener on the other side and other side is always on the other side no matter what side you are on right yeah it's it's Uh, such a pleasure talking to you harsh and there's so many lessons that we are taking from this uh, conversation and um, harsh you are this cool inspiring guy who's leading an aspirational life and who is you know going to villages and really causing an impact and and all of that so you must be getting a lot of attention what about the female attention <laughs> how many girlfriends you have no 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 so uh i <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, in fact, I tell people when, like someone asked this to me on radio, one of the I J was, and I said, "Nay, yar, engineering kare li, Everest kare li, sab lekin ladki nahi mili." So, <laughs> yeah, so, so I tell the same. Uh, and ladki don't ni hai. Nay, nay, nay. So time nay hai. I, I, I get. So whenever I feel very, very lost in life, I go and check my DMs. Or when someone says ki aare koi nahi milegi, to I say nay, nay. Idhar hai rishte hai. So <laughs> that helps me boost my morale that way. So But, Harsh does not have an Instagram account that he operates. He he has an Instagram. Yeah. But does he have a Tinder or a Bumble no, or no, whatever? No, no, <laughs> no. I don't have time. I would want to do that. But now I think I am too old for that. So I am just busy. You are just twenty six, Harsh. Please don't say that. Abhi wo face chale gaya like abhi. It is just a number. Just a number. Sometimes yeah. you are. Yeah. Uh, But now I am busy working on myself, and sometimes I feel that I might die lonely because <laughs> I am so busy with all my endeavors, and I am happy about it. Uh, in fact, I recently got a picture of Sir Ratan Tata framed. That okay, I would want to do one percent of what he is doing for mankind. and obviously he is the most eligible bachelor out there so a good <laughs> icon <laughs> yeah a good icon to have and even he came close to getting married four times in his life but he didn't do it because did of his research. work yeah so i i got a story to sell that no <laughs> he tried it four times didn't happen for him but he he could have but he chose his work and which was somehow The Tata Group is the most philanthropic group I know, so I would also want to at least sell that story <laughs> and follow it. You never know; I I might do something, but yeah, for now, abhi ke liye padai. This life is abhi musti aari hai, maza ho raha hai, impact create kar rahe ho. Jo karna hai dil se, logo se junna hai, kam karna hai, logo ke liye kam karna hai. We are from a country where we have. Uh, 1% of the population enjoys the life that even a lot of people in the world can't dream of with the kind of amenities we have and a large population is where even electricity accessing that basic need is just off question so i think we need a lot more uh, and a lot many harsh like you in our country and uh, people who can really envision a change and not just envision it on the paper but really create it every day with every step that you're making um, thank you harsh for doing the work that you do and uh, i look forward to your future adventures do stay in touch and uh, all the best for whatever your next everest everest is yeah for sure whatever it is you will find in the news so in case if people would want to follow my journey anyway then they can they can google me and find my handles or i am writing a book so just wait for it all the best for that book uh, Uh, i'm sure it will have all these rich experiences combined and all these humbling experiences so i would also want to put out the message there that whenever he writes a book and it comes out guys you know it's coming from a genuine heart it's coming from genuine stories and if you really want something to move you do follow him do uh, check out his uh, things and uh, help uh, him as well in some ways uh, i'm sure harsh now is going towards a, a dream and he has big sponsors like your whole education 
uh, your master's degree in the US MBA program is funded you've already got into one of the so top I 20. got some offers yeah but top I'm 20. not going to take those up you want to so, go in top 5 yeah that's so why <laughs> it it might not be funded i would take that loan but yeah good but enough. you're okay with it. Yeah, yeah i and i i have people who would be willing to help me but i tell people that now i don't need help pay it forward uh, help others up so yeah i i think i am not worried about myself now but doing something greater or cooler like not exactly uh, social work but just doing something good something meaningful wow all the best to you for that harsh god bless you and keep inspiring all of us and do take us through your journey within the internal journey through your uh, posts out there whatever is written about you out there your book i really am looking forward to it thank you thank you once again